dear attendees and dear colleagues please accept my greetings i'll be speaking on chronobiology and before i start speaking on chronobiology i must appreciate the role of teaching learning center of ramanujan college doing wonderful work and this refresher course i hope will be very fruitful and i am very much grateful to dr madhu yaspal for inviting me and providing me with the opportunity to interact with you <coughs> i should do tell you that uh, there will be four different chapters on chronobiology and uh, the basic chronobiology i'll be talking about in two chapters and the application aspects of chronobiology will be delivered by my colleague professor arti parganiya so we'll be talking about <coughs> chrono therapy chrono medicine all the application aspects of chronobiology <coughs> before i begin i must tell you that there are many arrows of time but i have selected the most popular one and i identified that they are basically three the first one is the thermodynamic arrow of time the second one is the psychological arrow of time and the third one is cosmological arrow of time so let me introduce that what is this uh, thermodynamic arrow of time in this case you know the disorder or entropy always increases with time that means we cannot expect that a broken cup the pieces of that broken cup will join together and climb up on the table so what does it mean that means disorderliness or entropy always increases with time so we cannot uh, go to the past and then we recreate the whole scene okay so that's the thermodynamic arrow of time so in the psychological arrow of time we remember the past but not the future so that means you know that we can recall that when i was just college student i was enjoying a lot you can remember the entire past but you can never remember the future so if you remember the future then you become a billionaire the next month because you will know that which ticket is <coughs> appearing in the lottery <coughs> now the third one is the cosmological arrow of time this is the direction of the time in which the universe is expanding okay only expansion is possible with the passage of time but contraction is not possible so this is known as the cosmological arrow of time the universe is always expanding now i'll introduce another arrow of time which i call as chronobiological arrow of time and you know that it is a cycle that involves 360 degrees the time is circular here it implies 
that we know the past, we know the present, as well as the future. So that I will explain little later during the course of my lecture. So now, let us see that uh, what is this chronobiological era of time? That means we are talking about cycles. We are talking about periodicity. <coughs> and uh, as you know that uh, living organisms always keep track of the passage of time. So here, how do they track? Using clocks, you know, using biological clocks. And then I'll be talking about those clocks a little later. Now you can see that uh, the bacteria, fungi, plants, insects, and mammals. You can say that all living organisms, they are capable of tracking the passage of time. How do they track? They use the biological clocks and they track the passage of time. So now you look at this picture. You can easily understand just self-explanatory. Now you see that different stages of uh, sleep wakefulness. And these are very, very, you know, clock controlled activities, biological clock controlled activities. So you can see that you see this is the pictures from the parliament, you know. So that means what we can say, these clock controlled activities are uh, uncontrollable. That means when you have a hours to sleep, a dose of that is not under your control, that is under the control of the biological clock. So similarly you can see, so these are uh, not only in human beings, but also in animals, you can see that. The phenomenon of sleep and uh, wakefulness. <clears throat> now you can see that it's it's an uncontrollable urge to sleep. Now you look at the these pictures. You just imagine that uh, you see now it's a running train and people are sleeping on the roof, rooftop of the the train. Now you look at the rickshaw puller. Look at the animals, how they are sleeping. What I mean to say, that uh, there is an uncontrollable, uncontrollable urge to sleep. And you can see, it's a metro station. So don't think that the person is reading the newspaper. He's actually sleeping in a standing posture. So, now I'd like to tell you the locations of these clocks, biological clocks. So, the, from this picture, symbolically I would like to tell you that they are present in each and every cell of the human body. Except, of course, the erythrocytes the biological clock activities of the erythrocyte is not controlled by the central nervous system. That is the, I will talk a little later about it. So now, I would like to tell you that there is a great uh, amount of diversity in the in the clocks that we possess or any living organism is possessing. So grossly, I'll tell that there are three 
different types of clocks. The first one is circadian clock. The second one is interval clock. And third one is millisecond clock. So I'll just briefly tell you what are these clocks. So now you can see that uh, the circadian clock is, uh, you know, that is, uh, you can see the, the master clock, uh, the master circadian clock is located at the suprachiasmatic nucleus. This is the point. Okay, there are others are involved, pineal gland, pituitary and everything. But the master clock is located at the suprachiasmatic nucleus. Now let us look at the interval clock. In the interval clock, three prominent areas they are involved. One is cerebral cortex basal ganglia and cerebellum. These three areas of the brain, they are involved in the perception of time. That means how do we perceive an interval of time? If you ask you to estimate say 10 seconds, you might say that the 10 second as maybe you will judge it as 15 seconds. So that is called underestimation of time. The 10 seconds may be judged by you as 5 seconds. So that is known as overestimation of time. So this, these are the areas of interval clock. And then we have the millisecond clock. In the millisecond clock, there are a number of areas of the brain they are involved, but basically it is the activity of the neurons that uh, you know that runs the millisecond clock. So I'll briefly explain to you what are the different functions and mechanism of these three different types of clocks. Now you see, we have uh, uh, in the top, you know, we have the circadian timing, then we have interval timing, and then we have millisecond timing. So now you see this is the, uh, you know, the percentage of errors in the large scale. So if you look at these three clocks, then you'll find that this interval timing is very precise. But its periodicity varies. This varies greatly. But if you look at the circadian clock, again it is very precise. And uh, it is, you know, about 24 hours plus minus something, plus minus some minutes. Now look at the millisecond timing. And millisecond timing, there is, you know, there is a problem of accuracy. But if you look at the functions, then you'll see that in the circadian timing, the most important one is, you know, sleep-wake cycle, our appetite, and brain structures. Obviously, I have already told you that suprachiasmatic nucleus, and the mechanism is, you know, transcription and translation feedback loop. Now, in the interval timing, you have no foraging activity. Suppose you are uh, trying to fry a bread, then how much you will wait to flip the bread? So all these things, you know, the activity of a pilot when to land on the runway, all these, you know. And in the multi-second, uh, multi-millisecond timing, you know, we have, uh, you know, the music, the dance, all these, you know, that uh, that is controlled by millisecond timing. So these are basically uh, different time intervals that we measure. So if you are measuring a time intervals of 24 hours, 
then we call it as a circuit in time again. and it is millisecond in the range of milliseconds and this is very wide you know from millisecond to almost uh, hours 24 hours so now there are many other clocks as well so we have circa septon clock with a periodicity of seven day we have lunar clock we have tidal clock we have circa annual clock we have ccr clock we have transier clock and also we have a bamboo clock the flowering in the bamboo takes place uh, with a periodicity about 35 to 40 years so i put a question mark because our knowledge is very limited about all these clocks now you can see i am just uh, giving examples of two marine organisms where you will find that the tidal and monthly timekeepers that means tidal and monthly clocks, they work independently of the daily clock. So you can look at the literature to find out in details that how interesting it is that they are independent of the daily cycle. Then if you look at the rhythms, rhythms are what? They are the expression of the biological clock. If you look at the rhythms around and within us, then you will find we have the day-night in the environment and we have within the organism, there is a 24-hour rhythm and we call it as circadian. And we have moon, lunar cycle, then we call it as lunar rhythm and we categorize it as infradian terminology. Season, that is annual and seasonal rhythm. So we call it as circa annual. Circa means approximately. Then we have circa septum, but we have a question mark. There is no environmental correlate of circa septum rhythm. Then we have a tidal rhythm. The tidal rhythm is very complex because if you look at the frequencies of the tides, it keeps on varying from morning to evening and from one day to another day, all that, okay. So now, so that means we have 24 hour rhythm and we period is 24 hour, we call it as circadian, lunar rhythm, approximately 30 days, we call it as infradian, then we have annual and seasonal rhythm, 12 month or 365.25 days, we call it as circa annual, and weekly rhythm, obviously I put the question mark because there is no seven day um, correlate uh, in the environment so we call it as circa septum and then we have tidal rhythm because it in multiple waveforms so we call it as ultra gel so but if you classify all those you know periodicity then broadly it can be divided into only three categories one is ultra gel which has a periodicity of less than 20 hours then we have circadian periodicity varies between 20 hour and 28 hours and obviously we have infradian when the period is greater than 28 hours so you look at the examples you see cortisol rhythm or melatonin rhythm can be considered as circadian now you see the brain waves ultradian then infradian human menstrual cycle that is infradian rhythm best example of infradian rhythm so now if you look at the rhythms in biological functions then you'll find that rhythms are present in almost all biological functions be it physiological say for example physical activity heart rate blood pressure be it endocrine system cortisol melatonin growth factor cytokines all they vary you know behavioral food intake sleep wake cycle psycho emotional variables like mood stress cognitive performances then cellular you know metabolism gene expression and everything so we find rhythms you know in almost all biological functions so um, in the next uh, 
lecture i'll be talking about biological clock and its historical background in little detail